This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1652, Stimulation and How I Learned to Love Dishwashing by Tynan of Tynan.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator. I read to you from some of the best blogs in the world every day, covering personal development and growth, lifestyle, minimalism, and more. If you enjoy the show, please share it with someone, anyone. That's how I can keep this podcast going. It's with your help. But for now, let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Stimulation and How I Learned to Love Dishwashing by Tynan of Tynan.com. When I bought a house 10 years ago, I also bought play settings for six and silverware for 12. Then I developed a minor fascination with bone china and bought settings for eight. I probably had four dozen glasses. About once a month or so, all of these dishes would be piled up in and around my sink, begging to be cleaned. I didn't have a lot of dinner parties. I just hated doing dishes so much that I'd procrastinate until washing became a full day event. Those days were some of my least favorite. A few days ago, I was doing the dishes for the six of us that ate dinner. There were pots, pans, plates, serving utensils, and glasses, the works. For the first time ever, I found myself enjoying doing the dishes. I could appreciate the warm water on my hands and the shine in the pot when it was clean. When I washed everything that wasn't dishwasher safe, I started hand washing the things that could have just gone in the dishwasher. It wasn't fun exactly, but it was so enjoyable that I actually found myself looking forward to washing the dishes the next day. Work has become the same way. I don't love all aspects of it equally, but when I wake up and know I have a tough day ahead of me, I feel great. Part of it is knowing that I know the day will end with a nice chunk of progress made, but most of it is the actual act of working. I love it. I can't wait to face off with a bug that's been bothering me for weeks, trace it through all of our code, and fix it. It's relaxing, like an internal Swedish massage. My friend Constance wrote me an email today. She was talking about me with her sister and some friends, describing my hyper-focus on work, learning, and other productive things. An excerpt from her email, quote, As I was talking about you, they got the impression you were too strict on yourself. Your routine didn't allow time for happiness. I almost described you as an overly anxious person, which isn't you at all, at least not from what I've seen, end quote. In comments, I sometimes see people encouraging me to have more fun, not work so hard, etc. I get where these ideas come from, but they couldn't be farther from the truth. I don't get stressed at all with doing this stuff. I love it. Enjoyment and happiness comes from attitude and process, not from setting or result. It took me a really long time to actually believe this and to internalize it. It always seemed like a hippie truism that wasn't actually true. But when I washed those dishes and felt the surprise of realizing that I was enjoying it, something clicked into place for me and completed the puzzle. I had a dream last night where I was put into a North Korean prison. They took my phone away and gave me this weird North Korean phone that couldn't access the internet. I was in for a life with no chance of escape and no way to contact anyone I know. You know how I felt? I was happy. My brain immediately started thinking of cool things to do in prison, like work out, write books, and share stories with other inmates. Every day, I generate a certain amount of happiness internally. I think about how fortunate I am to have good people in my life, great experiences in my past, and great challenges ahead of me. My experience of being alive on this earth is enough to make me completely happy every day. I'm not immune to outside forces, but I think of my happiness as a ratchet. Things can make me happier, but they can't make me less happy. So when I'm washing those dishes, the positive aspects of that process make me a little bit happier. But the grime on my hands or the hassle of scraping burnt food doesn't have any effect on me at all. I let the positive parts cloud out those details. It's a work in progress for me, but I try to be fully present whenever I do anything, whether it's washing dishes or drinking tea with friends. It's that whole commitment to the present that allows me to see all of the positive details of each experience. Even when I'm hard on myself, it makes me happier. It's not negative self-talk or discouragement, it's encouragement to step up my game and be the best I can. I love that feeling of making a challenge to myself and rising to the occasion. I wasn't born with this attitude. I was a chronic procrastinator, someone who was quick to give up or do a mediocre job on something, and someone who always looked for the easy way out. I got here through years of self-experimentation and through closely monitoring my happiness and my thought processes. It seems that most things people do to become more happy 
are actually making them less happy. The problem is that in their search for happiness, many people chase stimulation. Stimulation is mentally noisy. It drowns out your thoughts and the subtleties of the present. It makes your brain feel happy in the same way someone renting a limo can feel rich. When that feeling fades, you chase stimulation again to get it back. It's like a drug. Internal happiness and the happiness that can be milked from daily experience are subtle. They're found only in the quiet that exists in the absence of stimulation. I used to think that monks lived ascetic lives as a form of self-flagellation, but I don't think so anymore. I think that they eat plain food, wear plain clothes, and abstain from various indulgences because it helps them remain in a state conducive to sustainable happiness. Want to try something interesting? Decide that you're going to remove stimulation for a couple months. Eat the same exact food every day. Don't watch TV or play video games. Don't drink or do drugs. Pick out seven or fewer very similar outfits and wear them exclusively. Don't do anything for fun, but try to find the fun in everything. Don't date. When you have a moment of boredom, don't try to fill it. It will be a hard two months, and unlike many challenges I might suggest, I don't think you'll love it so much that you'll permanently adopt it. But I do think that it will change your perspective and build up your ability to generate happiness within. I haven't done this challenge explicitly, but my work schedule pushed me into it without me even knowing. Rather than the sacrifice that I would have anticipated it being, it has been a real pleasure and has brought me a focused calm I never had before. Plus, I like doing the dishes now. You just listened to the post titled Stimulation and How I Learned to Love Dishwashing by Tynan of Tynan.com. Speaking of washing and something becoming more enjoyable that previously wasn't, I recently got the Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment. Seriously, I'm not making this up. This is my favorite purchase of the year. I've told my family about it every time I've seen them. It's crazy that most of us wipe instead of wash. So bidets used to cost thousands of dollars, but now there are no excuses with the Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment. It's only $79. It attaches to your existing toilet with no electricity or additional plumbing. I installed it myself and I am not handy, and it cuts toilet paper use by 80%, paying for itself in just a few months. And every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Again, my favorite purchase this year. Seriously, they didn't tell me to say that. Go to hellotushy.com slash old to get 10% off. This is a special offer for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash old for 10% off hellotushy.com slash old. And I have that linked in this episode's description. And thank you to tying in another post that shows us how it's all mindset, right? Similar in a way to yesterday's episode, but quite a different perspective. I know it's true for me, sometimes I can be doing the dishes and not caring at all about doing them. Whereas other times I'm stuck in my head about something that's not really important. And I'll be mad or not in a good mood about the fact that I'm doing the dishes. It's an interesting idea trying to limit stimulation. I doubt anyone will try doing it, but if you do, please tell me. But in either case, I think he's right. We all become acclimated, right? Buddhist monks get used to wearing the same clothes and eating the same food and routines. Just like we get used to living in a small place or a big place. It's amazing at first with a big place, but then we become used to it. It's all perspective and mindset, and that's why it's important to remember to be grateful for what we have. I'll leave you there for today. Hope you're having a great Friday and I'll see you over the weekend where your optimal life awaits.